In this video, we're going to see how to add a linked style sheet to an existing HTML page. I'm starting with a very simple HTML page, intentionally simple, well formed, and we see open HTML, and then we have the head section, a meta for our care set title, and then our body, which is what the user will see. We have a div, just kind of an invisible container, an H1, a paragraph, and then a form with two fields. If we take a look at it right now, it renders like a very simple page, just like so. We want to style this up a little bit with CSS, and so that's what we're going to work on next. Now, you can use your favorite IDE or text editor for this. To demonstrate that it can be done in any IDE or text editor, I'm using my favorite, which is Notepad++, but I'm actually going to copy this into a different project and post it on GitHub so that you can see it locally if you wish. First of all, I'm going to add a few things to this HTML page. Just a bit of structured HTML we will put right under the form. And this is an emphasis tag. What can you do with the site? A bulleted list. And then a div with some information in here and yet another bulleted list. The reason why I'm adding this is it gives us more things to style with CSS. We look at the page now, we see we have our emphasis here, and then we see we have several other pieces of data. Now let's start with our CSS. Notice that I am editing this file locally. So I'm going to take this file path, and I'll copy and paste that into Windows Explorer, just the path, not all the way down to the file, because we will typically put CSS in a subdirectory called CSS. So I want to reflect that on my local computer. Then inside of this, we'll go ahead and open up, and then we'll say new styles.css. Go ahead and take off the text extension. And then edit with Notepad++, and that'll put our CSS style right next to our HTML page. Now, the next most important thing to do is to link these two pages together. Let's go to the head section under title and add link rel equals style sheet. href equals now, this is the reference to the style sheet, and remember we put it in a subdirectory CSS, which is common. And then the name of the file is styles.css. And finally, type text slash CSS. That's the slash on the question mark key on a US keyboard. Now, one caution here most web page editors will simply terminate this tag with the greater than symbol, but there's not an open and close for the link tag. So to be proper XHTML compliant, be sure to put a slash before that greater than symbol to indicate that this is a singleton tag. And at this point, these two pages are linked together. We won't see any difference in the look and feel yet because we've not yet added a style, but we can do that now. We can add a couple different styles and remember the way that styles worked. First, we have a selector, which means what tag does this apply to? Or what ID or what class does this apply to? I'm saying body, which is the visible content of our HTML page. So this change will affect essentially that entire body. This is a good place to put a background color. And we simply say colon, make sure that's a colon, not an equal sign. And then pound ffdb99, which is one of the colors we can get from our color wheel, and then terminate with a semicolon. Now refresh our page and you notice it kind of has that kind of cream tan color. That's very general. Let's consider something that's very specific. Let's say that we only want to apply a style to these elements here. Well, we see there are li elements within a ul element, which differentiates them from the list below because the list below is li elements within an ol or ordered list. In other words, numbered list element. Ul is simply a bulleted list. Unordered list is what UL stands for. Within a div, in this particular div, we've given an ID. An ID means that only one element on this page will have the ID, its unique identifier, as opposed to a class where a class means multiple elements on the page can share this identifier, or class rather. And if we apply a style to the class, it will apply to all elements that have that class selected. Nonetheless, let's go back to our style CSS and consider how we can be very specific on selecting only those elements that I highlighted before. Well, if you think about a selector, if we specify selectors like who we are, which is that, uh, remember that's that ID, we just saw who we are, and then we put a space and then we put another selector. Uh, perhaps we put the UL, who we are UL, and then we put one more selector, 
and that's going to be li or line item. If we space delimit them, that means that it has to be an li tag within a ul tag within an element that has id equal to who we are. So essentially it's getting very, very specific when we separate them by spaces. I want to call out a little distinction though. If they were separated by commas and not spaces, that would mean something entirely different, which means apply this style to all elements that have the ID who we are, apply it to all ULs, and apply it to all LIs. So comma separated actually creates a humongous list because it's the union of all those things together. Where space separated means every time I see something, the uh, area that this applies to gets more and more specific. Nonetheless, that's our selector, and now let's give it a style. Open and close curly, and let's let's be really specific here and say font dash family, and then colon, and then we're going to put in a series of fonts, and remember the way that this works is that we will go from the most specific to the most general, and the browser will find the first match that exists on the user's computer. And we save. Now let's take a look at our page. I'm anticipating when I hit refresh, we're going to see a style update to these items here. And sure enough, you see that is a different font than all the others. And notice it only impacted these items right here. So that's a simple look at how to match up CSS with an HTML page and a few examples of a very general selector and an extraordinarily specific selector and a few different styles we've associated with them. So as always, I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.